Hi, and welcome back to another session from the uh, Users blog. And in this session, I want to look at the basics of using a reverb in a track. Now, reverb is slightly different from the other stuff I've shown you so far. What I've shown you on most sessions when I've been showing you the basics is using insert points for adding things like compression and noise gates and EQ. Now, that's appropriate, but the the thing about reverb is often reverb will be applied to lots of tracks at the same time. So whilst it's okay and perfectly acceptable to use reverb as an insert, what you'd often do, and is often the practice within the studios, is you'd add reverb as a insert on a bus and then you'd send to that bus and then you'd add varying amounts of reverb from every track. So we're going to use sends on this occasion. The first thing you want to do is add the reverb and to do that we want to go to track, new, create one stereo auxiliary input. That's what you're going for. First thing we just rename that, we're going to call it verb. And then what we want to do is add to that into an insert the reverb, one of the reverbs that we get. So we're going to go for air reverb. And that opens up like that. Now, at the moment, it's opened up a factory default. And we'll be looking at the different reverbs in a second. But the first thing is, at the moment, you'll see nothing's going to the reverb. The reason is that we need to route some sends, which we've got here, from some of the tracks back into the reverb. And the way we do that, the first thing we do is we create a bus input this time. And we go, so we're going to say, we're going to say uh, bus 9 and 10. You can use whatever you like. And I'm going to rename that as reverb. And then what we do is we want to send from some of these channels back into this channel where the reverb lives. So let's say the snare drum is obviously a perfect candidate for reverb. And we go here. And now we have got a send that's going to go out of this back into here. And we can add varying amounts of reverb. And the reason I say use it as a send rather than as an insert is we're going to use the same reverb several times so you can save processor power. And that's quite normal. And of course, in the old days of hardware, you would have only had one or two reverbs in your studio. So you couldn't be adding this, uh, lots of different hardware reverbs to different channels. So that's where it came from. But it's still a good practice. And of course, you don't want lots of different reverbs in a track. It just sounds really weird at times. So let's play the snare drum. As you can hear now, I'm also going to add that to the bottom snare slightly. And then I'm going to copy that by pressing Alt and dragging it to the toms. And the toms will sound nice with a bit of reverb on. Now what you'll see on a send straight away is that you've got a pan as well. So we can pan these so they match the channel that they're coming from. Look at the reverb now we've got it up. The first thing we've got on this is pre-delay. That's actually how, when does the reverb start coming in. So if you wanted to make a really big sound, we could put a pre-delay pre of like 154 milliseconds and now you'll have a basically a delay before the reverb starts hitting. Let's hear that. Now another cool trick, if you want to hear things soloed with the reverb on, if you press the command key and the solo key, you'll see it goes that dim grey. That's what we call solo in place, and now when I hit the solo there, and you can hear that pre-delay, bring it back down. So that's the pre-delay. That's when, so that's when the reverb starts, of course, in big spaces like cathedrals and stuff like that. You will have a pre-delay because of the time it takes for the sound to get to the back wall of a cathedral or up into the, the spaces and come back. Now, by combining pre-delay and reverb time, you can sometimes get some really big sounds without lots of messy. Because at the moment, if we go back and we hear this... That's quite a big sound because we've got about 1.9 seconds of decay time. If we pulled that down to about there, 
sounds much more like a small room now, like a garage or something, but if we put pre-delay back in as well. You hear, you can get some really... And I use that quite a lot on vocals. I put quite big pre-delays and quite short reverb times, which means that you then have tracks that aren't so splashy and messy. Let's push that back up to about 1.2 seconds. The next thing you've got is room size. That's basically a control for how big the room space is that it's working in. That sounds like a, a small bright room now, a little drum room. It's like a gymnasium now, but we add the reverb time back in, sort of cathedral style. Now the next setting you've got as well, while we leave that sort of large, huge reverb timer, which I wouldn't use in in most cases, uh, we can balance between how much early reflection of the sound we want to how much tail. And again. that there. Now most people are going to probably think, because it's a free plugin, the reverb from air, this new one that replaced Dverb, or it's probably going to be used by more people than Dverb was, uh, is, is a pretty low rent reverb, but it's a pretty good reverb actually. And uh, <laughs> we can choose quite complex uh, early reflections. So we say, okay, we want a, a drum room, a room. Or we want uh, a large studio. Choose how wide it is. Very good that. And again delay it. Now that's quite cool actually. Sometimes you know when you use reverb, is it's they're so wide you just can't sit things in the mix very well. So I love this out width because what you don't want is this. For me that's just a bit weird. So I tend to bring the, the width right in. It just helps to sit it more in the mix. Especially on smaller sounds. Next thing we've got is density, how complex. These are about the complexity of the reverb. Almost with the density quite low, it's almost like a slapback echo now. And again, so we bring it up in density. That's the that's more reflections coming in now. So it sounds uh, the way a reverb is. It's it's basically millions or thousands of little echoes working together to create that kind of splashing effect. Now, what it is really is just one echo uh, repeating itself, and what the density does is give you the amount of echoes that will happen. So you can't hear when the density is about a hundred percent. You can't hear them happening. So bring them. Sounds a bit like a football stadium now. Next 
next thing we've got as well is the high frequencies. Now in a bright room, such as a tiled room with glass in it, then that's going to have very, very sharp sounds. A, much, a room with curtains and fabrics in is going to start having a much warmer reverb. So let me play you that. <laughs> We can adjust that. So that's the high frequencies. And we can adjust the time between when the high frequencies come back and when the low frequencies come back. So we can actually roll a lot of the low frequency out. If you want the sound to be much brighter and sort of lexicon style, you put these back to where they should be. be much more noticeable if we bring that on the kick drum for a second. Hear there? You wouldn't tend to put reverb on, on kick drum normally, but of course there'll be some bleeding through. I tend to keep it off because obviously it muddies up the bottom of the sound, so we'll put those back where they were. So there we are, and if you've got a reverb you like. So I'm going to save that. I go save settings as, and we'll call it Russ Verb the Snare. So now we've got that in our list of stuff. It's Russ Verb the Snare, which is kept in the session folder, which is cool. Of course, you can either save it in the session folder, or you could save it actually in the the settings, so that when you say come down this list here, then there'll be one in there for you as well. There's like a vocal hall I've saved. That's a bit serious. So there we go, using reverb in a session. I hope that's been a help, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.